It's uh, such a joy to be with you all this evening. I praise God for the ministry of Pastor Alsop and for Pastor Kim and for Pastor Rick as we journey through these uh, steps together. And so I am here to take us through the next phase. Where do we go from here? And I pray that God may give us a wisdom as we navigate this by his grace. Let us say a short prayer before I dive into it again to pick up where Pastor Kim left us. Father, <clears throat> guide us now by your spirit, for we ask in your name. Amen. So as you hear, it's called Pawns in a Cosmic War. And in this segment, I consider to phrase it as the accusers versus the testifiers. And we're going to see how this plays out in the casting out segment. The text is now picking up from verse 9 of chapter 12. He says, So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan. Pay attention to those words again. Deceived the whole world. That's his work. He deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now, salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. It says now next, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of of their what? Testimony. Pay attention to those words. And they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows he has a short time. I think none of us will be lost to figure out if the devil is in town. We know, we have evidence. The devil has come down for sure. He is around. Now, team, I'm going to divide this presentation into two brief segments. The first segment is what I call just the Bible teaching to expound on these concepts. And then the next phase will be the application of it. Now, here is something that I want you to pay attention to. In the scripture, there are two casting outs of Satan. Pastor Akim already addressed the first one in 12 verse 4. First, when he sinned against God before humanity was created, we see that in Isaiah 24, uh, sorry, Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, and also in Revelation 12 verse 4. But then there is a second casting out that happens after Jesus died at the cross. And we get to see this now in Revelation 12, 9 through 12. And we also see this reflected in John 12, verse 31 through 33. Actually, one writer has put this well. He said this this way. He said, Satan was first expelled from heaven at the beginning of his rebellion against God's government. He wanted to take the throne in heaven in order to be like the Most High. However, after Satan's expulsion, he still had access to heaven, the book of Job portrays him as attending the heavenly assembly before God and making accusations. Remember, an accuser against Job. And then it continues. Similarly, Zechariah saw him in a vision, accusing Joshua, the high priest, before the heavenly court. However, the situation changed with Jesus' death on the cross when Satan's true character was revealed before the entire universe. So remember, there are how many casting outs? There are two casting outs. Where needed, we can provide more evidence, even in the text itself, that gives you this particular understanding. And then the other thing you need to remember is the name devil means slanderer. That means his default setting is to slander not only the name of God, but also to slander the name of God's people. I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, you are on Satan's radar. He intends to slander your character too. And the word Satan means adversary. He is the enemy. Now I bring this out because part of this will come to the application sense. Next, we need to pay attention to know that Satan knows his time is short. 
because the end time clock began ticking after Jesus came. So it is true. When we look at our time today, we say we are the end of time. But I want to make a case and say we're actually towards the very end of time because the time of the end began. When you read Hebrews 1 verse 2, when you read 1 Peter 1 20, when you read Acts 2, chapter 2, you realize that the time was time of the end began. And the one who knew this clearly was Satan. He knew his time was short after he had been expelled from heaven. And I want you to notice the last point in this Bible teaching segment that I think is critical. <laughs> the cross event, simply meaning the crucifixion of Jesus on the cross, on the cross is what caused the ultimate casting out of Satan from heaven. When you read in the book of John 12, Jesus brings this out and says, now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And he says, when I will be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. Pawns in a cosmic war. Now let's get into application. Bear with me as I step on your toes, because this message step on my toes too. Accuse us versus the testifiers. I want you to realize this. As we go through this concept of a revival, a revival cannot happen if we become pawns of Satan. It cannot. A revival cannot happen in our hearts if we pick the wrong side of the accusers. We have seen Satan as an accuser. We have seen how he does this. We know for sure he was cast out of heaven, and yes, he was cast down to the earth. But because he was cast down here, I want you to notice something else. None of us has probably made Satan face to face. But just like the wind, we get to see his movements. But I want you also to realize this. He was called in the Bible text we just read, the serpent of old. The reason he's called the serpent of old is because we are being taken by the writer back to the book of Genesis to be reminded that when the devil showed up to Adam and Eve, he did not show up as a devil to introduce himself. He came through a medium. And so I want you to know that the devil is alive and well down here. He is down but not out. And so he is working through mediums to achieve his goal. And so when we see that he's working through mediums, you have to ask yourself, what does that mean? How does he then operate to achieve his goal? Well, friends, we see that in the Old Testament, in the Garden of Eden, he came through the serpent. But when you read your Bible in the book of Matthew 16, pay attention to this, friends. There was a disciple by the name of Peter. And when Jesus was preparing to go to the cross, to do the very same thing that was going to cast Satan out. Satan decided to say no. And he walked through this man called Peter, telling Jesus, you cannot speak like that. You cannot talk about going to the cross. And Jesus rebuked the devil by saying to Peter, get behind me, Satan. In that moment, the devil was trying to walk through a disciple of Jesus called Peter. When Jesus was going to be betrayed, the book of John 13 tells you this. The devil entered into Judas that he may go and betray him. All I'm saying is this. At some point, if we don't watch out, we can become pawns of Satan to hinder what God intends to happen. And we cannot afford to be that. The call today is to make a choice that we cannot be part of the devil's agenda to be an accuser. That is his character trait. And so what does he do? Satan intensifies his efforts in working through God's people to play the role of the accuser. This is why, friends, I want to borrow from a man called George Knight in his book, If I Were the Devil. He says this, if I were the devil, I will get Adventists fighting with each other. After all, if Adventists were busy shooting all their bullets at each other, 
they wouldn't have many left over for me. The devil has been quite successful in this strategy. And this is the reason why people can sit in the same family, but before long, they find themselves in a constant accusation of each other. Things they don't know or things they may not even understand. This is why one camp on the other side is accusing the other. Accusations are going back and forth. It will happen in your church. It will happen in your home. It will happen in your place of work. Accusations going back and forth. My question is this. Are we able to take a pause and ask myself, am I going to be an accuser in this process? Brothers and sisters, here's my point. I don't even want you to play victim and say someone accused me. Because as soon as you begin to go down that route, before long, you're going to become another accuser. Just ask yourself, am I choosing to play the role that the devil wants for me? He's looking for employees in this cosmic conflict to accuse. But friends, that's not how the victory is won. The victory is won by understanding that Satan is cast out when Jesus is lifted up. That is how it works. We lift up Christ. When Christ is lifted up, this is how people are drawn to him. People are not drawn to Christ when we accuse them. People are drawn to Christ when they see the beauty of him. And the way we do this is by testifying about him. This is why we need to understand that the goal of revival is to resemble Jesus. The book of Revelation begins by telling us Jesus is the faithful witness. He is the one who was willing to sacrifice because think about it. Spend some time in the book of Philippians 2. It tells you that Jesus looks out for the interest of others more than his own interest. That Jesus is not filled with arrogance. He humbled himself rather than exalting himself. Jesus is not focused on sacrificing others. Jesus is willing to humble himself to the point of death, even the death of the cross. This is the reason why in this segment of this particular chapter, it says, for those who follow Jesus, they not only overcome by the blood of the lamb, but then also overcome by the word of their testimony. And it says they did not love their own lives, even to death. The testifiers are a different breed. They don't win by accusations. They win by testimony. They testify of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so friends, think about it. Does he, do you look for the interest of others like Jesus? This is the call today. Think about it. Are we seeking to take a humble approach like Jesus rather than exalt self? Is it me to say I'm better than you? Or am I willing to actually adopt the mind of Christ? to actually think of others as better than me. This is the breed of testifiers. Think with me. Am I focused on sacrificing others' reputation or am I focused on exalting the re reputation of Jesus Christ? Brothers and sisters, it is our testimony and not our accusations that overcome the enemy. And we have to make a decision during this revival series. Who's Porn are we going to be? Christ or Satan's? Are we going to be the accusers or are we going to be the testifiers? And the last thing I want you to know to miss is this. The time is short. You see, Satan knows his time is short. Do we? At some point, I have to stop playing on the wrong team. At some point, I have to choose to be on the right team. Because friends, the time is short. I may think I may have time, but I'm sorry, it may re I may realize too late it's gone. I'm gonna finish with this story. About three years ago, we went on vacation. We went to one of the cities. We actually were partitioning between four cities without going to the details. On Sabbath morning, we woke up and we agreed we are going to go to a church nearby. We thought so, it was 30 minutes away at least according to the GPS. 
So we woke up, we dressed up, we were ready to go. And then somebody said, wait a minute, just hang here a little bit because the service does not begin until around 11. That's what the website said. Friends, we hung out quite a bit. And then when everybody was now ready to go, we left going to the service. We got there and we found that they had just finished their service. What we had not paid attention to is that church was in a different time zone. They were one hour ahead. We left thinking we had time. We arrived to realize it was over. Brothers and sisters, tonight, your family needs you to be a testifier. Your fellow church members need you to be a testifier. Your co-workers need you to be a testifier. Because before we know it, this battle will be over. And I wish by God's grace, we may choose to be on the right side. It's my prayer for us in Jesus' name. Amen.